Welcome to this special edition of Hannity, The Road to 2020. I'm Jason Chaffetz, in tonight for Sean. With just 95 days until the election, Democrats are turning every issue into a political lightning rod. Many on the left are even accusing President Trump of being personally responsible for the spread of COVID-19. Just today, Congressman James Clyburn floated a conspiracy theory that Trump didn't have a plan to battle the virus because it was spreading in blue states. But at today's coronavirus response hearing on Capitol Hill, Dr. Fauci painted a much different picture. He actually credited the president with saving lives. Take a look. Were you involved in working with President Trump on deciding to ban flights from China? Yes, sir, I was. Do you agree with that decision? I do. Do you think that decision saved lives, Dr. Fauci? Yes, I do. Do you agree with the decision uh, when ultimately we saw spread in Europe and then the president recommended that we extend that to Europe? Did you participate in that discussion? I was actively involved in that discussion, sir. Do you agree with that decision? Yes, I do. Do you think that decision saved lives? Yes, I do. Eventually, then, we saw the United Kingdom have an outbreak, and there had to be a tough decision made. Do we extend that to the United Kingdom? Were you part of that decision? I was. And do you agree with that decision as well? I do. Did that decision save lives? Yes, it did. When you look at the 15 days to slow the spread, uh, initially it started at 15. Were you part of the decision to implement that decision? I was very much involved in that. Did that decision save lives, Dr. I Fauci? believe it did. Then when President Trump met with you and Dr. Burks to extend that another 30 days, uh, do you agree with that decision that President Trump made to extend that? Yes, I was very much involved and I agree with it. Did that decision save lives, Dr. Fauci? I believe it did. Congressman Scalise will join us in a moment. His colleague, Congressman Jim Jordan, grilled Fauci on whether or not the nationwide protests are causing the virus to spread. Oddly enough, Fauci tried to dodge the question in this tense exchange. Watch this. Do protests increase the spread of the virus? Do protests increase the spread of the virus? Uh, I think I can make a general statement. Well, half a million protesters on June 6th alone, yeah. I'm just asking, that number of no. people, does yeah. it increase the spread of the virus? Cra crowding together, particularly when you're not wearing a mask, contributes to the spread of the virus. Should we limit the protesting? I, I'm not sure what you mean, should, how do we say limit the protesting? Should government limit the protesting? I, I, I don't think that's relevant to... For 63 days, nine weeks, it's been happening in Portland. Right. Yeah. Well, one night in Chicago, 49 officers were injured. But no limit, to pro no limit to protests, but, boy, you can't go to church on Sunday. What was the... Uh, I don't know how many times I can answer that. I'm not going to opine on limiting anything. I'm just going to tell you... You've opined a on a lot of things, Dr. Fauci. Yeah, but I've never... This said is something that directly anything. impacts the spread of the virus, yeah. and I'm asking your, your, your position on the protest. Yeah, Jim Jordan's right on that one. So Fauci will comment on baseball, football, schools, going to bars, cruise ships, but he won't directly address the massive nationwide protests that are still ongoing. And don't forget, Democrats closed businesses, churches, beaches, bars, restaurants, and restricted who you can have in your home and whether or not you can even sing in church. Joining us now with reaction is House Minority Whip Steve Scalise, Fox News contributor Governor Mike Huckabee, and American Conservative Union Chairman Matt Schlapp. Thank you all for, for being here with us. Congressman, I wanna, I wanna go with you. You did a great job of, of, of questioning, but Fauci just wouldn't go to certain areas. What was the mood within the room and what did the Congressman leave at the end of that hearing with? Uh, Jason, good to be with you. And uh, look, the mood in the room was very serious because we're making big decisions. We're seeing states make big decisions, all based on data. And you know, they are, the Democrats are literally trying to mislead the country and say there's no plan and say that, uh, they, they criticize the plan, by the way, when the president does things like shut down flights from China, but then they say there's no plan if they see tests go up. They criticize the president for not having enough testing. The president, we're almost 800,000 tests a day now which is a revolutionary number. And then they criticize that there are too many positives because more people are being tested. All they want to do is attack the president. And I think today I really wanted to question Dr. Fauci about 
the decisions that were made by President Trump to take leadership, to develop a plan, and ultimately, Jason, to save American lives. And Dr. Fauci, right down the line on every question I asked him, confirmed that, number one, President Trump has a very solid plan. He works with the smartest doctors in the world on that plan. And the president's plan is saving lives every day. And Jim Jordan touched on the idea that, you know, if you can say you can't go to church, but you can go to a protest. We know protests, like any other large gathering, spread the disease. Going to church, you can do it safely, where it won't spread the disease. And there is a dichotomy, and it's like they don't want to even acknowledge that that exists. Now, Governor, um, I'm sure you caught at least parts of that hearing, uh, but I got to tell you, Dr. Fauci wouldn't go and comment on some of the biggest issues of the day, but it's not like Joe Biden is out there leading from behind showing us what we should be doing either. I think that uh, what Congressman Scalise did was to show that there was very specific leadership on the part of the president and the administration. And, and let's be real clear. The president is doing what a president should do. He's leaving a lot of the detailed decision to the local states and mayors. That's what the Tenth Amendment says. But where there is the need for a national decision, whether it's closing uh, travel in from China or restricting it to other countries, the president has taken those actions. He's got gotten ventilators available for states and turns out he got more than anybody even needed. He's done exactly what he's supposed to do. I hope his campaign will hammer that message and I think what Congressman Scalise did today in that hearing was incredibly valuable in showing that there's not this uh, big fight between the science of what Dr. Fauci wants to do and what the president is doing. He's doing what he should do. The interesting thing, the Democrats say, there ought to be a national plan. But if he does say, let's go and protect federal property in places like Portland, suddenly they come unglued and they say, he has no business being there, when in fact he does. So that's the insanity of all of this. It's not about safety. It's not about science. It's not about making sure that we're safe from COVID. It's about hating Donald Trump and trying to make sure he's not president for the next four years. Yeah, Matt, it really is about politics, as the governor was saying, because uh, if you go through that hearing, the Democrats were trying to rewrite history. They were trying to spin it a different way and remember it a different way, because I tell you what, when Donald Trump was limiting travel from China, it wasn't in the front page news. They called him all sorts of things, a xenophobe and That's all right. those types of things. But this hearing really did expose that the Democrats are playing political games. Well, thank God for Steve Scalise and for Jim Jordan and several others of the, of the Republicans who are on that committee because a hearing is a place where we actually can listen and learn. And I think this is critical. When Nancy Pelosi said, this is the Trump virus, that was when she said public what you're supposed to say privately. Because what they're trying to do with this whole Chinese corona, and I'm going to keep calling it Chinese corona, Jason, because they want to make it Trump corona. They wanted to make it conservative corona. They think corona only spreads when Republicans come together and Republicans go to church and Republicans rally in Tulsa. All of a sudden, there's always these uh, this coverage of outbreaks. But when Black Lives Matter or Antifa or whatever try to destroy federal property, this is the you know this is all consistent with the First Amendment and just fine. And even Tony Fauci is playing into the politics of that. It's all about politics. Look, the president did things we've never done in our history. We've never prevented Americans from coming back into their country over the over our health scare. The president made sure that if they tested positive, that they wouldn't be able to come into the population until their health improved. We did the same thing with cruise ships. We shut down our economy. We shut down schools. We shut down churches. A lot of conservatives have concerns with those things. But you can't level the charge against the president of the United States that he didn't take extraordinary, unprecedented, historic steps to try to keep us safe. The reason why they're not giving him any credit is because it's all about beating him. And I think the American people get it. And I think the Democrats have way overplayed their hands because our health should not be a political football. Yeah, I, I do think the Democrats are, are overplaying their hand. And for Congressman Clyburn to suggest that Donald Trump didn't do something because there were Democrats living in that state is just disgusting. disgusting. It shouldn't be accepted. Disgusting. It was way, way over the line. Gentlemen, thank you all for joining us on this uh, beautiful Friday night. We do appreciate it.